जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरिवरद हारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरिवरद हारी यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजजन रंजन जमुना तीर अन छारी जमुना तीर वन छारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरिवरद हारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना चीरा वन छारी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद जय द्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नादपी सुनी चैना थोड़ारिवास हिष्णुना अमानी ना मान देना कीर्तनीय सदा हरी हर नाम हर नाम हर नाम आयब केवल खलो नस्व 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 गतिरण्यता वंच का पत्र व्यस्ता कृपा सिंधु व्याय बचा पतना पावन व्य वैष्णवेव्य नमो नम हियर इन दि वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड टुडे दे आर सेलिब्रेटिंग फादर्स डे सो यस्टे एंड फ्राइडे 
and went through Prabhupada's books to see what I could glean about the meaning of father, the implications of father, according to the teachings of our Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya. So right there, Srila Prabhupada is our father in this movement. This ISKCON movement was incorporated in July of 1966. And so he's, his title is Founder Acharya. He started this movement. It was his brainchild. He is the person who created it. And he's Acharya because he instructs us by both his personal example and by his precepts. So he's at, in this movement, no matter who you are, he is everyone's father, spiritual father. We can all uh, take shelter of Srila Prabhupada, his movement, his books, his philosophy, and feel confident that he is our, as he would write in his letters, your ever well-wisher. That's a father. A father is someone who is a well-wisher of his children. And Srila Prabhupada was the well-wisher of his disciples and followers and grand disciples and great, great grand disciples. Srila Prabhupada will remain founder acharya of this movement for the next 10,000 years, only if we want. That's a challenge to the next generation, my generation, the direct Prabhupada disciples. We're dying off one by one. So the movement will be in your hands. I pray that you keep Srila Prabhupada as founder Acharya of this movement and not replace him with someone else. That's my worry. He is the founder Acharya. No applications being accepted. Position fulfilled. Srila Prabhupada, our father. When I was growing up in Our Lady of Loreto Catholic School, we were taught the Baltimore Catechism. And we were taught that God is our Father. Indeed, there is one prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And when I came to this movement, and I started to read Prabhupada's books. Then I got a full understanding of how God is our Almighty Father. And even more so, by studying Prabhupada's books, I came to understand very thoroughly, hallowed be thy name. Because our philosophy, our core philosophy, is that God's name itself is the holiest of holiest. God's name. Just by definition, God is the holiest on high. But when you understand absolute knowledge, you understand that the name and the person are non-different. Here is this nice glass of water. This is a material thing. In order to quench my thirst, I need the object. If this was absolute, then I would quench my thirst by saying, water. Water, water. 
but we don't find that. No, in the material realm, we need the object. Why? Because we're living in a non-absolute or dualistic world. The sound water is completely different from the object water. But on the transcendental or absolute plane, the sound Krishna is not different from the person Krishna. And who's Krishna? Krishna, this is what I love to say to a certain religious denomination. I like to tell them that you preach to me that Jesus is the Son of God. I've been hearing that for the past 67 years. I have no problem with that. But when somebody tells me Jesus is the Son of God, then I point out, who is that God that he's the Son of? His name is? Everybody say. Ah. Yes, I love to point that out. This is the God who is in heaven and whose name is holy or hallowed. And that explains why we chant God's name incessantly. Kirtaniya, Sada. Always we're chanting or trying to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Because you can have the presence of God with you at all times simply by chanting this name Krishna incessantly. He's there. Your ability to perceive is dependent on the quality of your chanting. That is why we follow rules and regulations. That is why we worship Deities. That's another question that we're asked repeatedly. Why are you worshiping idols? Are you worshiping idols? I'm not worshiping idols. Are you worshiping idols? We don't worship idols. We worship God. You worship idols. American Idol. Money. Trump. You are worshiping idols. I'm not worshiping idols. I worship God. Because we here in this Krishna consciousness movement as taught by our father Prabhupada, we see things from the absolute platform, not from the materialistic or dualistic platform. We see things from a transcendental platform. Yes, to materialistic vision, that's marble, statues. Yes, if you have materialistic vision, I would agree with you. But we don't have such materialistic vision. We have transcendental vision. That transcendental vision comes about by the agency of mother and father. Which mother and father? Not the mother and father that gave you this body. The mother and father I'm talking about is Guru and the revealed scriptures. That is the mother and father who gives you your transcendental birth or like our Christian friends like to say, have you been born again of the Spirit? Yes, sir. Here is my spiritual father and these books, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, these are my mother. By the basis of Mother Shastra and my spiritual master, I get my second birth born again, my transcendental birth. Everybody please repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. 
हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे आई डू दैट फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम जस्ट टू सी इफ आई हैव दी ऑडियंस सो बेस्ड ऑन योर रिस्पॉन्स आई फील इनकरेज आई हैव नॉट लॉस्ट यू येट थैंक यू सो लेट्स गो थ्रू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल भगवद गीता and see where this concept of father comes in so in the fourth chapter in the very beginning krishna tells arjuna the origin or history of bhagavad gita how krishna millions of years ago spoke bhagavad gita to the sun god divaswan and divaswan gave it to his son manu So Manu is the father of the human race. Interesting. The Sanskrit word Manu is where the English word man comes from. Manu, man. So he is the father of mankind. Then in chapter 9 Krishna is explaining some of his opulences to Arjuna. Krishna says Pita aham asya jagata Krishna claims I am the father of this whole universe This is Krishna's claim But then later in chapter 11 Arjuna is seeing the universal form Because he asked Krishna please reveal to me this cosmic form of yours how you pervade the whole universe so krishna told arjuna yes but with your eyes you cannot see i have to give you divine eyes same thing an ordinary person without transcendental knowledge sees statues but when you have transcendental knowledge or jnana chakshush eyes trained by hearing the vedic literatures you don't see statues you see god so in the same way in order for krishna to reveal the universal form he had to give arjuna the transcendental vision and what did arjuna see hundreds of arms thousands of legs bellies heads he saw all the demigods He saw the opposite party the Kauravas smashed in the mouths of the universal form there were smells and all kinds of wondrous things he was experiencing various emotions conflicting emotions wonder fear of bewilderment and he asked Krishna who you are and Krishna said I am time and i have come to destroy everything in this cosmic manifestation that's my job as time so when arjuna is offering prayers to this universal form he says pita asi lokasya charat acharasya krishna you are the father of the whole world you are the father of those that are moving and those that are not moving because some living entities move but some living entities do not move but arjuna said no you are the father he uses the word pita everybody say pita so now you've learned one nice sanskrit word for the father pita but the conclusive verse appears in chapter 14 this is the definitive statement by krishna so we're going to chant this verse and read prabhupad's purport please repeat after me first sit properly repeat om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेरी गुड नाउ वे लाइक ऋषिज इन द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ नैमिशरण्य सो लेट सी हाउ योर संस्कृत इज दिस विल टेल मी हाउ एडवांस्ड यू आर ऑल राइट आई विल चैंट इट स्लोली यू रिपीट सर्वयोनिषु काउंटेय Very good. Murtaya sambhavantiya. Tasang Brahma Mahad Yonir. Ahang Bija Prada Pita. So that's the key line. Let's do that two more times. Ahang Bija Prada Pita. Ahang bija prada pita. So this 14th chapter of Bhagavad Gita is entitled the three modes of material nature. And this is a very important concept throughout Bhagavad Gita because this whole material cosmic manifestation is categorized and qualified by these three modes goodness passion ignorance so all activities everything is either in the mode of goodness the mode of passion the mode of ignorance or a combination permutation of them so you get 3 times 3 is 9 times 9 81 you come out with 8 million 400,000 species of life in the material realm so what does krishna say please repeat it should be understood that all species of life how many did i say 8,400,000 by the way out of those 8,400,000 Only four hundred thousand are human. Eight million are lower animals, aquatics, birds, reptiles, insects. So the human beings are small, and of the human beings, those which are considered civilized is even smaller. Don't worry, you're considered civilized. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not be here. The mere fact that you're sitting in this room proves that you are a civilized human being. You don't need no passport or this no. Your ability to stay in the class and sit you're a civilized human being. Because I know it's not easy sitting there listening to some idiot speak. I know what it's like. So the fact that you can do that very good. Okay, continue. It should be understood that all species of life O son of Kunti and who is this because she has five sons which one is this one? Ah, very good. Please repeat are made possible by birth in this material nature and that i krishna am the seed giving father so here is the direct statement by god himself that we are his children we are all god's children now he said all species So the animals are also God's children. This is why we don't kill animals for eating because they are also God's children. You can't say to your father or mother, "Yeah, I ate my brother because I was hungry." <laughs> It doesn't work that way. So all the species of life Krishna says I am the seed giving father 
So, a fundamental concept of the teachings of this movement, and it's the first thing you learn in Bhagavad Gita, you're not that body. You're not your mind. You are the soul. And that is the seed-giving potency of Krishna. The soul is part and parcel of Krishna, which he says later in chapter 15, where Krishna says that Mama Eva Angsha, you are my Angsha, my part and parcel. In other words, this spiritual seed known as Atma, the soul, has all the qualities of God to minute degree. That's the only difference. We have all the qualities of God. The difference is God is omnipotent. We are infinitesimal. He's infinite, infinitesimal. Don't worry, I used to get angry. What? I can't become God? That's all right. It's not necessary. I can be completely happy by being infinitesimal. Once I got over that, that you cannot become God, but you can still be completely satisfied and happy being the part and parcel. So here in this verse, Krishna is claiming that he is our father. So on a day like today, we should accept, yes, Krishna, you are our father. And I should feel very happy to have such a qualified father who has all opulences. Our father, because it's not just mine, he's your father too. Let's look at Krishna's stature. He is unlimitedly wealthy. He has all the wealth. He has unlimited strength, unlimited beauty, unlimited fame, unlimited knowledge, and unlimited renunciation. This is our Father. So we should feel very happy. Oh, and one more thing. Although Krishna is the oldest person, what does he look like? Youth. He's not an old man with a beard. No, he's a youthful. And he's a dancer. He's a prankster. He's a lover. He does all kinds of wonderful things, our Father. And if you want to know more about our Father, Srila Prabhupada has written my favorite book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ninety chapters of wonderful descriptions of Krishna's activities when he was here on earth just 5,000 years ago. Very recent. All these events, historical events, are written down in this Krishna book. It was the book that convinced me that I am Krishna's son, that I am part and parcel of Krishna. So let's try to hear Prabhupada's purport to this Bhagavad Gita shloka. Try to hear now. It's difficult, I know. It's not a long, it's only one paragraph. So what does Prabhupada say? In this verse, it is clearly explained that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original father of all living entities. In other words, we have our father and mother, 
that's there. But our original father, that's the key. He is our original father, referring to the soul. The living entities are combinations of the material nature and the spiritual nature. That's why in other lectures I like to make the comment, we are hybrid. We have a material body, but it's being uh, driven by a spirit soul. So where it's a certain combination of matter and spirit, I call it hybrid. Such living entities are seen not only on this planet, but on every planet, even on the highest where Lord Brahma is situated. Everywhere there are living entities. Within the earth there are living entities, even within water and within fire. All these appearances are due to the mother, material nature, and Krishna's seed-giving process. Now, Prabhupada's referring to something and this is where we sometimes people who are followers of Hindu philosophy they accept Lord Shiva as the father and from one angle of vision they're not wrong because what did he say here these appearances are due to the mother material nature so the living entities, before they take their forms in the material nature, they are remaining dormant in a particular form of Krishna known as Garbodakashayi Vishnu. And when it's time for a material manifestation, Garbodaksha, not Garbodakshayi Vishnu, Mahavishnu, Mahavishnu glances at Durga and that glance is all the living entities and they take, that glance takes the form of Shambhu, Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva and Durga engage and all the living entities are injected into the womb of material nature. So in that sense, yes, we can say Shambhu, Lord Shiva, is our father, but he was like an intermediate father. Originally, we come from Krishna. We enter the material realm and inside Mahavishnu, when it's time, he glances at the material nature that glance takes the form of Shambhu. He has all the Jiva souls inside. He unites with Goddess Durga. We take our birth. So he is also considered father. So we can remember him as well. The purport is that the material world is, and he uses, look at Prabhupada uses the word, impregnated. I just gave you how that impregnation happens is impregnated with living entities who come out in various forms at the time of creation according to their past deeds, karma, one of the five principal subject matters of Bhagavad Gita, karma. That means I have to live a very conscientious life because... I am creating my own future. My future is not dependent on anyone else but the choices I make. The choices I'm making now, day by day, are determining the next chapter of my life. If I live a pious, religious, spiritual life, then my next life will be very, very nice. But if the choices and decisions I make are 
violations of God's laws, then my next chapter will be very, very much filled with suffering. That answers a lot of questions. Questions that many religions don't have an answer for. Why this person is born in a very suffering condition. They become bewildered. Some people get so bewildered, they become atheists or they become haters of God. But once you understand this concept of karma, that I am responsible for my lot in life, then I'm not bewildered. If I'm born in a particular very bad situation, it's because in my past, I did sinful activities. Now I have to pay the account. You see that now, if somebody lives a certain way, violating the laws of nature, the laws of God, it eventually catches up. It eventually catches up, either in the form of disease, chronic disease, or becoming implicated with the government, the law. I'm not going to go about politics right now, although I'm tempted. But the fact remains, we, even in this life, what to speak of the next life, we are creating our own not-too-distant future, dependent on our decisions. Now this next verse on the father principle is a warning by one of an, another of Krishna's incarnations, Rishabdev. Everybody say. So he had 100 sons and he once sat them down just like this and he was instructing his sons. He said, Guru Nasasyat Svajano nasasyat, pata nasasyaj, janani nasasyat, daibing na tatsyan, na patish chasasyan, na mocha yadya, samupeta mrityum. One who cannot deliver one's dependence from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother, or worshipful demigod. So here Rishabhadev is impressing upon us that human life is a life of responsibilities. So before I consider being a guru, or a father, or a husband, or a mother, I have to ask myself, will I be able to deliver? Will I be able to give protection? Will, be a, will I be able to train my disciples, or sons and daughters, how to become liberated in this life? That is the first question. Will I be able to deliver them? I'm going to finish tonight's lecture by reading one of my favorite sections in Krishna's pastimes. The incident occurs after Krishna kills Kamsa. As soon as Krishna was born, Kamsa started sending one demon after another because Kamsa had heard an omen that the eighth child of his sister Devaki would kill Kamsa. Because Narada once went to Kamsa and said, Kamsa, in your previous life, you were a demon. Your name was Kalanami. And Lord Vishnu killed you. Now you're Kamsa. 
you're a demon again. And Vishnu is going to come and kill you again. So he heard the omen when he was driving Devaki home from the marriage. And he heard it again when Narada pointed out specifically. So as soon as Devaki gave birth to the eighth child, Kamsa was very much alert, sending one demon after another to kill Krishna. After 11 years, Kamsa decided to meet Krishna and directly kill him. He had a master plan, inviting Krishna to come to Mathura. Krishna left Vrindavan, came to Mathura, but all of Kamsa's plans failed until finally Krishna grabbed Kamsa, dragged him down off of his elevated seat, and by punching him, killed Kamsa. And then like a lion, dragged his body around so everybody could see, I have killed the wicked Kamsa. And all the devotees were very, very happy. Jai Krishna! Jai Krishna! Jai Krishna! So after this, Krishna was reunited with his original parents, Vasudev and Devaki. Because upon Krishna's birth, Krishna was switched with the baby that was born of Yashoda. This was all Krishna's plan. So Devaki and Vasudev, they missed Krishna's first 11 years because he stayed under the shelter of Yashoda and Nanda. So now there is the family reunion. Now, after 11 years, Vasudev and Devaki get Krishna back. So Krishna speaks so nicely to his parents. I love this section. So just listen now. As it says here, Shukadeva Goswami is describing. Lord Krishna, the greatest of the sattvatas, approached his parents along with his elder brother, Balaram. Everybody say. Humbly bowing his head. Oh, that's so great, Krishna. Krishna is humbly... Oh, I just... The thought of Krishna humbly bowing his head and gratifying them by respectfully addressing them, my dear mother, my dear father. Krishna, one thing we learn from Prabhupada, we get a very clear concept of how God is a person. This is a very important concept. That yes, God is almighty, but at the same time, he's a person. He's the sweetest person. And he approaches his mother and father. My dear father, my dear mother. He continues. Because of us, your two sons, Father and Mother Devaki, you always remained in anxiety and could never enjoy our childhood, boyhood, or youth. Deprived by fate, we could not live with you and enjoy the pampered happiness most children enjoy in their parents' home. With one's body, one can acquire all goals of life. And it is one's parents who give the body birth and sustenance. Now, this next statement by Krishna, everyone should really consider carefully and see what it means to you. Listen to what Krishna says. So he just said, 
It is one's parents who give the body birth and sustenance. So you have a body. This body of yours was given to you by your father and mother. Therefore, no mortal man can repay his debt to his parents, even if he serves them for a full lifetime of a hundred years. A son who, though able to do so, fails to provide for his parents with physical resources and wealth, is forced after death to eat his own flesh. A man, although able to do so, who fails to support his elderly parents, chaste wife, young child or spiritual master, or who neglects a Brahmin, or anyone who comes to him for shelter, is considered already dead, although breathing. Thus, we have wasted all these days, unable as we were to properly honor you, because our minds were always disturbed by fear of Kamsa. Dear father and mother, please forgive us for not serving you. After all, we are not independent and have been greatly frustrated by cruel Kamsa. So, I ask you all to see how this statement what it means to you. I'm going to tell you what it means to me. So I lost my mother in 2007. I lost my father sometime 2010 or 11. So I'm thinking, yes, in my childhood, I did many things. I hurt them. I broke their hearts. So I'm thinking, following Krishna's direction, what I can do to make up. Fortunately, our spiritual master, our father, has pointed out by means of the scripture, the best thing you can do to repay the parents is to become a pure devotee of Krishna. That's all I... And interesting, the only time I asked Srila Prabhupada a question, Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? He said, love Krishna. So, my spiritual father my material father, I can satisfy them both just by loving Krishna. So that is my mission in life, to develop more and more. And this is what Lord Chaitanya teaches, dormant love for Krishna. It's in all of us. Krishna is not some Hindu god. He's not some foreign national. He's not some alien. No. He's in your heart. He's right there. You are his part and parcel. It would be unnatural not to love Krishna. That is craziness. Someone who does not love Krishna, loka in la cabeza. Because we are his part, Amsha. Mama Eva Amsha. We are his, we're his part and parcel. And Lord Chaitanya teaches, love of Krishna is already there in everyone's heart. It just has to be developed. And that is why Lord Chaitanya teaches us, 
you want to develop love of Krishna, you don't have to press your nose. You don't have to go into a yoga pose. No. All you have to do is three things. Chant, dance, and my favorite, take prashad. That's how you develop love for Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now, I've talked about several fathers. There's one more. Yes. Lord Chaitanya, 500 years ago, once performed a civil disobedience movement because the Muslim magistrate, Chand Kazi, had given an order no more drums, no more kartals, no more this Hare Krishna chanting. If anyone does it again, I will confiscate their property and they will be punished. So all the simple devotees went to Lord Chaitanya. The governor has told us no more chanting. Lord Chaitanya said, don't worry. Tonight, Everybody, we're going to go out into the street. We're going to do loud chanting. We're going to have torches. We're going to go see Mr. Kazi. So Lord Chaitanya and his whole army of devotees, they went marching through the streets. And they were loudly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So Lord Chaitanya knocked on the door and told, yes, tell the Kazi I am here. But the Kazi was afraid to come down because that night he had a very bad dream. That dream was very, very scary. And when he saw the huge crowd he was very nervous. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, bring him. So there at the doorstep, they had a conversation. They talked about many things. But this is one of the things Lord Chaitanya says. My dear sir, I have come to your home just to ask some questions. The Kazi replied, yes, you are welcome. Just tell me what is in your mind. Lord Chaitanya said, you drink cow's milk. Therefore, cow is your mother. 
And the bull produces grains for your maintenance. Therefore, he is your father. Since the bull and cow are your father and mother, how can you kill and eat them? What kind of religious principle is this? On what strength are you so daring that you commit such sinful activities? So, the cow and bull are also our father and mother. This is why we do not eat them. You would never think of eating your mother, would you? Or your father. So Lord Chaitanya says, when you have this spiritual vision, the cow, because she gives you milk, she's your mother. And the bull, who's used to till the land to produce grains, he is your father. On this principle, the Krishna consciousness movement pushes on. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everybody, one last time, very loud. Everybody. Iskan Laguna Beach Key.